I hope everyone can hear me all right. Um, this is Adrian Schottler with Solo Salon Owner Podcast and more recently with Chasing Checklists. And I was planning on going live on YouTube, but I've done a lot of digital cleanup today, so they wouldn't allow me to go live until tomorrow. But I'm in the studio. I wanted to get this recorded. You might hear some noise in the background because there are people working, um, but this is the week between Christmas and New Year's, and I wanted to record because if you've not already started planning for 2024 and wrapping up 2023, now is the time to get started. Um, it's important to prep and plan because every year is different. And so how did your 2023 go? Do you feel like you're ready to grow or are you scaling back? For me personally, 2023 was a scale back. I had a couple injuries and some health issues. And so in order to pivot, I'm focusing more this year on education. If you've followed me for a while, or if you've been a student of mine, I've done nails for 20 years. So I'm going to introduce myself real quick. My name is Adrian. Once again, I've done nails for 20 years. Um, I've made every possible mistake you can make, every single one. So I think that the education that I provide is so much more valuable because of those mistakes. I've learned a lot the hard way. And I've been an employee. I've been in a commission salon. I've been in an hourly wage salon. Um, I've been independent. I've been booth rental. I split a salon with a partner for a while and I had employees and then COVID hit and everything changed. And as I've gotten older, it has been less, um, less feasible for me to do eight hours of services. And so focusing on education, I've worked for one of the large nail companies, um, worldwide and have mentored. So I do have a lot of experience. Um, I'm not going to say I know everything just because of my 20 years experience, because that would be ridiculous. I learn a lot by some of the younger nail techs or people who are fresh coming into it. You know, the business has changed a lot in 20 years. And when we started, we were doing full sets at $25, $30. And now we're doing full sets at $85 to $100. Um, but the mindset of the customer hasn't changed. And so what I provide is organization and systems. And I provide these systems because it makes your life easier. It cuts out the chaos of your daily salon life. And it also helps provide a better customer experience. And so there's different things in this organization and systems that are necessary in order for everything to flow. It's all about routines. And what I find in the beauty business, a lot of people in the beauty business are neurodivergent, ADD, ADHD. Um, that gives us our creative edge, right? So having routines and having systems and having checklists in place is very helpful for anyone to get things accomplished. And so today I want to talk about a little bit about wrapping up 2023 as well as planning for 2024. I, in 2023, um, have kept pretty good records. I've kept to the routines. One of the things you should be doing right now is wrapping up paperwork and getting things ready for taxes. If you are not in a position to wrap that up, don't start setting goals for 2024. It is not a due date of January 1st to set a goal, your New Year's resolution. It's such, um, it's such a lie, honestly. You can start a resolution whenever you want to start a resolution. And so I feel like January is a wrap up month and looking ahead. I love digital planning. I love digital scheduling and I love 
handwritten things. And so I use a combination of tools in order to keep myself on track. But when it comes to wrapping up finances in 2023, that's going to be your most important because you have to be ready for tax time. So whether you're a sole proprietor, an LLC, an S Corp, I hope you don't have receipts and boxes that have faded from the heat. I hope that you do have a separate bank account or multiple banks bank accounts. Ideally, as a business, you should have five bank accounts, which if that sounds crazy to you, we need to talk because being financially savvy and dividing up your money as it comes in is going to help you create a profitable business. In this business, it is a struggle to be financially fit and profitable because the overhead is so large. And as you know, costs of products keep going up and going up and going up. And so keeping ahead of things and being able to provide yourself a paycheck while continuing to grow is crucial. And so that's where these bank accounts all come into play. So if you need guidance, if you need guidance on pricing and valuing yourself, we need to chat. Um, you can book a discovery call with me at any time. And if you have trouble booking a discovery call, DM me. Um, I'm on Instagram and TikTok. We do have a private group on Facebook under Solo Salon Owners. And I do have the Solo Salon Owner podcast page on Facebook. Um, by the way, on Instagram and TikTok, it's under chasing checklists because that's my new pivot. So if you don't know me and if you've not heard of me, I did a podcast for a couple of years called Solo Salon Owner, and it was a test. It was an adventure that I decided to go on as part of continuing education because I wanted to share my experiences. And so I did a podcast. I literally just today was able to get it out on Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music and Audible. It has taken me months to get the links to connect. And because I don't have a lot of followers and I don't have a large audience yet, it made it. I had to jump through all these hoops, but I think I finally did it. So I'm available on Spotify, that I know for sure, and Google Podcasts. But also, if you go to solosalonowners.com, the podcast is available there. But basically, it's if you knew nothing and we're starting a business from scratch, that is what that podcast is geared towards. So check it out. There might be topics of interest to you. Um, I do go on a couple of rants of how much I hate Amazon and people buying professional products on Amazon and companies diverting products. It's just the whole thing is frustrating um, because this industry is taking such a turn. And a lot of people are leaving the industry because of that turn. And, and it's sad because people want the experience of luxury services, but so few are able to provide luxury services because of the challenges this industry is facing, I think. So anyway, I'm getting off topic. Check out the podcast. Check out my TikTok and, and Instagram. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, please like, share, sign up and follow because I'm trying to grow my audience a little bit to reach some more people. So getting ready for tax time, wrapping up your 2023, you should be looking back at your sales for each quarter where were you? What worked? What didn't? Did you have some Instagram posts that really blew up? Did you have some TikToks that really blew up or Facebook posts that really blew up? Take note of those. It's very important to possibly put those on a repeat. And it may have been the time of day. It may have been um, you were just in the right place at the right time. But if it worked once, you should try it, make notes, try it again. You should be going through your sales definitely to see how they compare to 2022. Did you gain? Did you lose? Did you spend more money on supplies? Or did you have enough that you bought in bulk that things got you through? These are important things to know this last week of 2023. You should also know a little bit about your inventory and what you're currently holding. Because if you need some tax write-offs, now's the time to make purchases. 
Do you need a new laptop? Do you need some new shears? Do you need a new e-file? Um, can something like a new TV or um, iPad in your studio or salon, could that benefit you for your client experience? What about a new coffee bar? Like something that's going to benefit you and the client. Definitely if there's products you need to purchase in bulk, like bags of cotton or nail files or hair combs, now's the time to do that. Look ahead so that the first quarter of 2023 can be more about earning and less about spending. Um, of course, you're going to want to go through your checks and balances and your bank accounts. If you do QuickBooks or any kind of salon accounting, if you've not kept up with it month to month, you need to reserve a day at some point between now and the end of January to get it wrapped up. You've got your W-2s if you have employees, 1099s, which, nah, you know, you really shouldn't be issuing 1099s because, um, yeah, that's not quite right in this business, but that's a whole other conversation. If you are a solo owner like myself and are in a suite or a studio, or if you're a renter, you only have to worry about yourself. Talk to an accountant. No matter what state you're in, you should have some kind of accountant and legal advice that is available to you to help you make these decisions. If you are growing, is it time for you to move to being an LLC or a S Corp? Talk to your, again, accountant and legal to provide you with the proper advice. They can benefit, there can also be drawbacks. If you're scaling back, like myself, I used to have more employees and a bigger space. I'm scaling back, I'm actually dropping my S Corp this year because it just isn't a value to me anymore. Um, you know, I employ one of my children to help me with inventory and cleaning and doing some online stuff, but that really is about it. I don't have an intention to grow again. Um, I'm actually looking to do a split on my studio because of my neck and back injury. Um, I need someone to come in and take over a few of the services that I'm physically unable to do. So it all really boils down to how hard do you want to work this year? In 2024, are you working five days a week? Or are you working three days a week? Do you want to take a two-week vacation? Mark it out on your calendar now. And that's what we're going to boil down to right now is getting ready for 2024. Wrapped up 2023. Do that first. Even if it's at the end of January, make February 1st your goals to start date. Make that your goal to maybe introduce a new service or have a specialty coffee for the cold months. Um, make February 1st your day to have maybe painting in your place refreshed or some new decor installed. Like I said, I like digital, but I also like planners. And so this is the one that I used for 2023. It's by Bloom. Um, it was pretty, pretty good. You know, they've got all of the things like you can see all of my lists kind of checked off there um this year i'm using one called uh, i can't remember the name i think it's called, called girl you gotta change oh wait hold on it's right here do 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 maybe not anyway i can't remember the name of it but it's refillable. So it's a little more eco-friendly. Um, but I started filling out um, all the things. You started filling out different goals. It's got a habit tracker, morning routines, three month check-in. Like I started all of that. Um, the monthly things. Um, 
I color code things for my family on my monthly looking at stuff and then I color code my work stuff. And so what I wanted to talk about is no matter what year you're planning for, plan for your business, but also plan for your personal. If you can't think ahead for the full year, you're not expected to think ahead for the full year. I plan 90 days at a time. So for 90 days from now, I know what day my kids don't have school. I know what days I'm taking off for mental health day because no one had a standing appointment that day. And so I blocked it out so that I can do my self-care. Those are the days I'm going to schedule a massage. Those are the days that I'm going to have a haircut or the dog grooming or those kinds of things scheduled. Um, I have marked out potential vacation time, but that's all in that 90 days. I have marked out all of my personal things. And then I have marked out in January what my goal is for January sales-wise because I want to improve on 2023 by 10%. So I know how much money I need to make to improve that 10%. I know how many new clients I need to see to improve that 10%. And I know how much retail I need to sell to improve by 10%. Now, whether I do all of those numbers in January is questionable, but I need to do at least one. So when you're making goals, if you improve sales, how many customers you see and your retail number, if you improve all of those things by 10%, your overall business is going to improve 20% or more. Does, I hope that makes sense. Because when you improve in small increments, it all adds up. And so each quarter, if your goal is to improve those three things by 10%, you're having a great year. If you can cut back your spending, you're having an even greater year. So that's why... Any profit that you have or money you have sitting in an account now, split some of it to go towards January or February, which might be slower, but then use some of it to bulk up on products that you know you're going to use. Um, in these binders that I do, I, I go through and like I mark out important things like for the whole year. I'm going to mark out when the holidays are. I'm going to mark out, <laughs> this sounds crazy. I mark out when the full moon is, not because I'm a practicing pagan, but because people get crazy around the full moon. I'd like to know when that is. I mean, wouldn't you? It just seems to coincide. Call me superstitious, but um, I mark out when the full moon is for the whole year. I mark out all of my family birthdays. Um, I mark out potential trips, school events, that kind of thing for the whole year. But that 90 day increment, I'm marking out things that are specific and measurable and things I know have to happen. Now, if you're not a by hand person, if you don't like to do all the little writing and the stickers, and that just seems annoying to you, I totally get it. Because usually in May and again in September and October, I drop off and it gets harder for me to stay organized in those months. I don't know why. Um, but having some preparation digitally is also important. Now, whether you do everything digitally is up to you. Sorry, guys, my hair is like I'm trying to grow out my gray, which is why I have the hat on and my bangs are driving me crazy. Um, anyway, digitally, what worked, what didn't? Now is the time to analyze that. Did you use a booking system? Did you love it? If you didn't, is it time to make a change? Be prepared in January to make a change February 1st. The longer you wait to switch a digital program, the harder it gets to keep track of your year. 
So let's say you use acuity and now you're gonna switch to square. It doesn't take a whole lot to do that unless you have a lot of employees. And even so, it could take a full day of sitting down and being hyper-focused and super prepared to get it done. Um, do all of your systems talk to each other? When you post on Instagram, does it automatically flip into your Facebook? If it doesn't, it should. Because not everyone who follows you on Facebook follows you on Instagram. Not everyone who looks on Facebook every day looks at Instagram every day, vice versa. So your system should connect and they should flow very smoothly. If you're using a booking system, you wanna make sure you are using the most up-to-date version and that you are taking advantage of everything it has to offer. I love the ones that are have a lot of automation. Um, you know, they should be getting automatic reminders for appointments. They should be getting um, some email marketing. If you have cards on file, now is the time to double check and make sure that those cards are still valid. If you have a birthday or loyalty program, those can be done digitally. You don't even have to think about it. If that is available in your booking system, definitely take advantage. Um, let me think what else. Another thing with clients um, is do you have clients with multiple profiles? Now is the time to go through that and make sure they are scaled down into one and that like their medications, if you need to know um, medications, having all of their allergies and that kind of stuff updated, if you have them sign or acknowledge your cancellation policy through a contract, you can do that through some of the booking systems. Super important because if you have followed me for any time, you know that I am big on boundaries and having set boundaries and having them written out and flow through your Instagram, your Facebook, your website, if you have a website or just a landing page, um, and your booking system. Your booking system could just be your website. There's a million ways to get all of that connected, but it should say the same thing across all your platforms. It has to flow. I think, I think that's really it. Another thing with digital systems is if you're using a booking platform and you're taking payments through that booking platform, it should speak to your accounting software. If it doesn't, or if your bank isn't talking to your accounting software, it might be time for you to investigate and make a change. I can help you in that. Um, I really have worked with enough platforms that there are benefits, cons and pros to each of them. And depending on your situation and how much time you're willing to put into it, um, you know, we can talk and talk about the things you hate and the things you love and find a middle ground so that the chaos is taken out of your workday. And I think that's pretty much it. Another thing that you want to keep track of for the whole year and something that should be in all of your calendars and booking systems is when taxes are due. If you have important due dates, or it, like if you pay quarterly taxes or retail taxes, you want to make sure you don't miss those. So set yourself reminders in your calendars. Your booking system should also have the ability to connect with, if you use like a Google calendar or a, an iPhone calendar, um, and that way you see all kinds of things throughout your day. So for example, I use Square. My Square connects to my Google. I also use HoneyBook. My HoneyBook, which that's for my educational and chasing checklist business. My HoneyBook connects to Google. So no matter what, when I open up my Google Calendar in the morning or my phone sends me alerts of this is what your day looks like, it's all in there. It simplifies everything for me, one, so I don't double book myself, but also so I know what's going on and where I'm supposed to be. Um, 
but I still do love a paper journal. And yes, it is a journal. It's a calendar. I have a couple, actually. I have I have the one that I'm using for the year to keep myself on track with goals. Oops, with goals and sales and all that stuff. But I also have this one, which is all of my notes from all of the courses I've taken and all of my notes with all of the ideas of things to get done. Journaling is part of self-care. If you're not a journaler, um, I've also found that you can keep notes in your phone as journal recordings. Um, if you have an iPhone in the health app, there's a whole like meditation, check-in, breathe for a minute, stand up for a minute kind of a thing. Super important. Super important mentally and physically. So set those up for yourself because the worst thing about being a nail tech is sitting down all day. And then at the end of the day, your watch says you've walked 500 steps. And you know that 500 steps was in and out of the parking lot into the bathroom a couple of times. Um, not good. So take advantage of those things and implement them into your digital planning. Another thing that you can do just for fun, if you um, like to listen to audiobooks or if you like to read a lot, or if there's different things that you want to keep track of through the year, make yourself a vocal note, a voice note, or even a page in your written journal to keep track of your books list for the year. And maybe give them a review, like a five star, four star, three star. And then you have a whole list of things that you can recommend at the end of the year to people on your page. That's a fun Instagram post is this was the best book I read all year. This was the best movie I saw all year. Um, one of my clients, she doesn't have a book club. She has a movie club. And so <laughs> they share what they're watching on Netflix. It started during COVID shut down and has just continued. Um, and so then they have a party, like a book club meeting, which is basically wine and cheese. And they get together and talk about whatever series or movie they watched. Um, you can also do this for personal growth, where you could do a word of the week and journal. It. Put your word of the week, even on your digital calendar, put it in a personal note slot on your Monday. So you see that word, and try to use it all week. It makes your brain function. It makes you a little smarter if you learn some new words, some new vocabulary. Um, and it's just a fun thing. When you use the word and people look at you like you're crazy, you're like, okay, either I used it out of context or um, truly it's a word nobody knows. Have fun with it. I know the idea of planning and prepping for an entire year stresses some people out, um, but it shouldn't. It's, it's something, unfortunately, as an adult, we all have to do. And I find that the people that don't are running literally with the seat of their pants on fire. And there's a lot of chaos and drama there. And there's a lot of not being in the right spot at the right time. And that's not good adulting. It's not good business ownership. Um, in the salon business, I've had some crazy owners. If you've listened to the podcast, whew, the one who was cutting people's hair while drinking, I've actually had two of those. Um, it's just unbelievable how people let the chaos into their business and their personal life just infiltrate and really ruin everything. So stay on top of yourself with accountability. If you need an accountability partner, that's why I am here. Um, I am doing discovery calls. I'll put the link somewhere. Um, it's in my bio for all of the Instagram, TikTok, all that. I'd love to talk to you, even if it's just for a discovery call, or if you decide to sign up for a program, um, I am working on doing, and I'm going to offer to people in my groups um, a digital 
kind of like monthly, this is what we should be doing planning checklist. Um, I'm still working on it. Like that's actually what I'm working on when I get off of this um, to update it, finish it and put it out there. So I hope you found this helpful and informative. I am going to put it on YouTube and Facebook and all things. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. If you have any comments, you know, you can leave them. I mean, whether you love me or hate me, I don't really care. Um, <laughs> but my mission is to help people who are struggling and to help people take the chaos out of their salon life. And it really is a great business. You need flexibility. It's a great business if you want to be in touch with people, but you don't want to work with a ton of people. Um, and if you want to work with a ton of people, there's those situations too. But let's have a great 2024. Let's wrap up 2023. I hope it was prosperous for everyone. And I hope that there aren't things looming overhead that's going to make the start of 2024 bad. We want to just kind of flush those all away do a little meditation, give ourselves some love and um, start a new path. If 2023 wasn't good, if it was a dumpster fire, let's get out of the dumpster and start 2024 off differently. Because if you keep doing the same thing, you're just going to keep running around in circles. All right, guys, have a great day.